The Philadelphia Eagles have a playoff game in a few days. Okay. Coaches are getting fired. Things are happening around the league. And what I'm sensing from the Eagles and what's going on right now is the Eagles are looking for a scapegoat to shift blame on another coach that shouldn't be shifted towards his side. And I definitely, definitely want to talk about it. Yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff going around the league right now, okay? Now, I want to go talk about Brian Johnson, okay? There's a trend starting to happen now. Now, I understand that, you know, the teams that are not in the playoffs, those teams are starting to fire some of their staff, whether it's coordinators, whether it's head coaches, whether it's whatever, and there's always going to have interviews and interest from other teams to pry off their rosters. Okay, even the teams that are in the playoffs, you know, there are other teams out there that are of in need. And usually, you know, the better teams that are out there right now, they're in the playoffs. You know, a lot of teams are going to try to pry off their rosters and try to get the best coaches and the suitable, uh, you know, guys that could, you know, be acquired, um, you know, for interviews and, you know, start coaching on another team and, and whatever to make another losing team better. Um, Brian Johnson, on the other hand, is an interesting one because this is Brian Johnson's second interview. The Tennessee Titans looks like are going to, um, interview Brian Johnson for the head coaching position. Now, this doesn't mean anything. This doesn't mean that, you know, this is an early process right now. Teams are going to interview a lot of candidates, uh, when it comes down to it, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't make a big deal out of it, but now I'm starting to think, and I'm not surprised over this because. It's looking like this is like the Dallas Cowboys with Jason Garrett all over again with the Philadelphia Eagles. Not all over again, but with the Philadelphia Eagles. It's almost it's almost the exact same thing, except Nick hasn't been here as long as Jason Garrett was with the Cowboys yet. Okay? I don't know what to take out of this, why there is so much interest in Brian Johnson getting head coaching jobs. I think... The league knows a lot of front office guys, a lot of people around the league of different teams know how the Eagles run things. The Eagles have lost five out of six, five of the last six games. Okay. How is Brian Johnson some hot commodity to get an interview that fast as of right now? And I strictly think. It's because everybody knows who's running the Eagles offense. Simple as that. I don't care if Brian Johnson Johnson's holding the clipboard. If you guys remember, I think it was right after the 49ers loss when Dave Spadaro was getting, you know, he was putting out, um, you know, getting answers, uh, getting questions answered from Eagle fans. So he was taking questions uh, from a lot of Eagle fans and Eagle fans did talk about, hey, Dave, What's going on with this offense? Who's running it? Whose game plan is it? Give me a percentage of what coach and what, who is this surrounding right now? Dave Spadaro said that this was Nick's game plan 100%. And these coordinators like Brian Johnson will piggyback off of that. There was a few games this year, especially near the end of the year, okay, where I've seen Nick checking off some things on a little clipboard as well at times. Not every game when they kind of show him, but it's starting to really fucking alarm me. It alarms me because you go into this season, no Shane Steichen, obviously new offensive coordinator. Brian Johnson was around Shane Steichen the whole entire year side by side with him last year. And how do we look this bad? How are we not playing four quarters of good football of one game of a full four quarters of somewhat productive football? And I think part of it is that teams, like I said, teams know who runs the offense in Philadelphia. The rumors go around. Maybe we haven't seen, and I, and I talked about this probably a couple months ago, maybe we haven't seen what Brian Johnson is actually putting into this offense. Because when you think about it, 
Nick's got all the control. Never mind Howie Roseman, but Nick, if they're allowing Nick, then I have to put the blame on Nick for making the bad decisions. Nick wanted Gannon's defense into this year and somebody to run it, some stupid fool, some stupid yes man to run that defense. And it was Sean Desai, uh, you know, a guy that hasn't been a, a defensive coordinator since 2021, a guy that's just an assistant with Seattle that we were promised so many different things, okay? And then you get an offensive coordinator that pretty much finding out till this day as of right now that he has no involvement in what they do offensively, barely. Even Brian Johnson's press conference, what, a week ago, a couple, you know, there was a couple press conferences. The last two press conferences, I felt like they don't even ask him about play calling, and if they do, it's they're very generic answers. I understand they can't say too much about what they do because they don't want to give any. It doesn't matter. What are you giving out? Because every team has figured this offense out. You watch a lot of tape from Shane Steichen last year and how they used the wide receivers when Jalen Hurts was extending plays. There was always somebody middle of the field. There was always mid-tier routes. There was always, we always worked the middle of the field and and route combinations weren't taking so long to develop. Um, to take a deep shot downfield or when Hurts, you know, senses pressure for two seconds and has to bail out to his right and finds absolutely nobody because everybody's out of position. There's no check down. There's no, there's nothing. And if there is, Hurts is not forced to, to do the check down. Whether it's on him or it's Nick saying, hey, just throw the ball down there. I don't care if the check down is there or not. And that's how I feel like what's all this is going on right now. 100%. Two interviews are scheduled for Brian Johnson. And Nick is untouched right now. And I compare this to the Dallas Cowboys with Jason Garrett. Because it's almost the same thing where they would blame everybody else but the head coach. Everybody else. The front office controls the head coach. The head coach controls everything going on on the field on game day, preparation for the week. And Nick doesn't know how to run an offense. Simple as that. Doesn't know how to run an offense. I think we all know this. It's just to a point now where I sit here and I'm like, okay, there's got to be some, there's got to be some reason behind all this is, uh, of what's going on. And if Brian Johnson is getting this many calls right now, the Eagles lost the last five out of six. Okay, like, there's nothing to call Brian Johnson about. Unless teams know what's really going on in Philadelphia. That Brian Johnson is going to be the blame for the Eagles' issues. For Nick to stay here as the head coach. For us not to move on and be better going, you know, for, for future years, future seasons. Why do you think head coaches aren't coming here? Head, different head coaches, head coaches that have an ego or, or have pushback, or you're not going to find a guy that comes into a room like this with Howie Roseman up there, not giving up any control. And that's a big problem. The philosophy has to change because if, if this happens this year, Really, it depends on this playoff game at the end of the day. It really depends on that game. If they win that game, it's because the team believes in Nick Sirianni. And if they lose that game, it's because the Eagles just haven't been out of this fucking black hole that they've been in for weeks. Really, like before the 49ers game or after, I think it was after that game, players were complaining. Not, I mean, uh, we have to challenge the mentality of this game and why they had no fight back and why when everything was on the line, when there was a team talking shit about you all year and you sat there and did absolutely nothing, you let guys get bullied and pushed around and you showed no fight at home. And that was eye-opening, that maybe they would get back on track. And they haven't been on track. This offense has been getting worse and worse and worse. And from what Dave told us, it's Nick's game plan for Brian Johnson to have, okay, for Brian Johnson to have two head coaching job, you know, interviews really shows what the whole 
with a lot of front office guys around the league or executives around the league are seeing of who controls what the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles tried to hire Brian DeBull as a head coach at one point. He didn't even answer the phone. Like, it, it, people know around the league how the Eagles run things. And that's why it's hard to hire anybody that's going to follow uh, what the Eagles want up top, okay, in the front office. So that's, I think, the biggest problem right now. The biggest problem. Like, there's something behind this. And from Brian Johnson getting interviews like this, it means that Nick has too much control over everything, and it's literally screwing everything up. It's screwing everything up as of right now. There's nothing that's going to get better. If they win a playoff game, I'll be shocked. I'll be I'll be dead shocked if they actually win this game on Monday night. I'm not kidding. But it really shows where the control is. It really shows what other executives around the around the league are feeling about the Philadelphia Eagles. Hence, if Nick stays after this playoff loss, if the Eagles lose Monday night and Nick is still here and he doesn't get fired at all, and they hire some random fucking assistant fucking offensive guru or I don't know some offensive assistant that we have no idea who he is this is just another pawn to work with Nick to do absolutely nothing with a stupid offensive coordinator title or another guy that's a defensive coordinator title it's the same thing on both sides why is it Nick has all the control why is it when we face Jonathan Gannon this year he looks like a totally different coordinator and I've been seeing it all year from Jonathan Gann, what he's done with that Cardinals defense and, and all the pressure he's giving. But then last year, we were taking our foot off the gas in the second halves of every game. And then we, we completely choked in the Super Bowl, pretty much. Not choked, but why are players leaving this team and being successful elsewhere? Why are, you know, they're like, why are, you know, there, there's just so much that goes into it. Our best coach on this roster right now, our best coach on this team right now is Jeff Stalin. That's our best coach right now. So this doesn't look good for Nick. It doesn't. Because I can't hate Brian Johnson for going to another team. You know why? Because I feel like we haven't seen 100% of what a Brian Johnson offense would look like. What he did at Florida State. What he, you know, like he's really had a lot of good success with quarterbacks. Brian Johnson has a very good record, a very good resume in what he's done with quarterbacks. And we're not seeing that. And I really feel, and I think it's evidence, because Dave Spadaro already answered this question a few weeks ago, that this is Nick's defense. Not the size defense, not Patricia's defense. This is Nick's defense. This is Nick's offense. Simple as that. So the cancer might be at head coach. And I'm sorry to say, because I don't like the attitude of this team. I don't like the mentality of this team. I think Brian, I think Nick makes him look makes himself look stupid every week. Says the same shit every week. He acts like he's a guy about to get fired at times. He, he acts like as if he's on the hot seat right now. And he says anything positive to make. I mean, seriously, when it's when it's burning down, just say it's burning down. So, you know, it's like it's like it's like it's like me staying in front of my house that's on fire blazing and telling you guys it's not on fire at all. And you got you're just looking at me like I got 10 fucking heads. And that's what Nick reminds me of. And I think this is a problem. It's a big problem that this isn't. The league knows how the Eagles run things. That's why no coaches want to come here because they can't have their own offense. They can't have their own defense. They they can't. This is hence why Doug's not here. Okay? So it's a big eye opener to see more than one interview for Brian Johnson. And there's probably gonna be a lot more to give him a, an actual chance to run an offense. We could have been blaming the whole the wrong guy the whole time. I've already got the sense of that really the last five weeks. I already kind of already knew this, but I'm glad that like we're seeing more early in the stage right now of Brian Johnson is now getting opportunities to interview for other teams for a head coaching job, which is nuts. 
Then you got Bill Belichick and the news that's been going on with him. Now, if you guys remember a couple weeks ago, before Belichick was released the other day and he had his little parting press conference the other day, okay, he says that, you know, for another team, he says the news came out rumor-wise of Bill Belichick that he will uh, not be in charge of personnel, that he will just be a coach and that's it. And there are some media guys that you know Nick Wright and a couple others have talked about Bill Belichick coming to the Philadelphia Eagles and would it make sense number one guys Bill Belichick's old they need a young coach they need they I mean at at the end of the day if Nick gets fired I I don't see this happening but I wouldn't be surprised either at times just because there was a bunch of news um kind of uh, connecting the dots Matt Patricia's here right now, okay, which is interesting. And then this Ryan, I don't know, somebody put out a tweet that blew up, okay. Uh, this was from Adam Schefter. Uh, Adam Schefter was hinting that there was a mystery team in the, in, Bill, in the Bill Belichick sweepstakes that hasn't fired their head coach yet. There's a team out there right now that has a lot of interest in Bill Belichick but has not fired their head coach. And trust me, maybe it's not the Eagles, but it wouldn't surprise me, okay? So Belichick, when he switched switched coordinators, okay, he wanted to keep Matt Patricia. I forgot what year that was. Um, But it all connects. Matt Patricia's here right now. And if I have to guess, and this is going to be ridiculously stupid, I don't know. But if the Eagles lose on Monday and Nick gets canned, it wouldn't shock me because Matt Patricia is here. That because Bill Belichick doesn't want any control because he's already promised he wants no control over, over personnel or anything like that. But he knows offenses. Okay. He knows how to run a team. That's what I'll give Bill Belichick. And he's and at the, and when it's game day and he's not, you know, off the field like being barely talking at all, okay, the guy can lead a football team, no doubt, and still could do it at his age. But because of how old he is and is this the right guy for us? And because Matt Patricia's here, it wouldn't shock me if Bill Belichick becomes the head coach. And it wouldn't shock me if Matt Patricia is made defensive coordinator. And Howie Roseman says, you know what? I like this pair. You know, let's turn ourselves into a dynasty. You know, like, I don't know. It sounds stupid. I'm not a fan of it at all. And if it happened, of course, I would support it. But like I said, I support things that I might not like, but I have no choice but to support instead of being negative about it. But. Since Matt Patricia is here, you know, we'll see. And it could lure. Bill Belichick has wanted to work with Matt Patricia, had wanted to come back and work with him, okay? Um, So we'll see what happens with this whole situation. Um, You know, you have Jim Harbaugh coming. You have, you know, Bill Belichick, you know, uh, he's going to still coach. He isn't retiring, you know? So I get it. I totally get it. So these rumors are, are kind of nuts, and I don't know what's to come of it with, with, with Bill Belichick, his future. And if the Eagles get destroyed on Monday night, which I really hope they don't, but if they do, and because Matt Patricia is still here, if they don't fire Matt Patricia, if they don't fire him, then I'm going to guess if he's still here for like two months after the Eagles lose this game, if they do Monday night. If Matt Patricia is still here, I feel like something could happen. Now, I think Matt Patricia could be the defensive coordinator next year, but do I want that? Hell fucking no, I don't. No way. No. Of course, I've been wanting Wink Martindale. and I mean, trust me, there are options out there. But because of pushback and ego... How he doesn't want to have, how he still wants to have control over the situation. And the head coach, he wants his head coach to have control over the situation. But it's amazing to me that you lose five out of six games, you go through your gauntlet and only play good second halves of football, and you literally make no adjustments. And how he just sits there and what, 
do they have meetings? Are they telling each other that there's something wrong? Like, well, because you're winning at the time, who cares? As long as you're winning, who gives a shit? But you lose five out of six, and I've seen no fucking changes. And that's a problem. Problem as of right now. You know, even like, like, I don't know what Nick, it's like, it's like Nick is just trying to throw us a bone, like to the media, like, oh my God, the Eagles were supposed to have a walkthrough and they fucking decided to practice. Wow. You know, great. Oh my God. So fucking impressive. Thank you for telling me, you know, just like, who cares, man? I mean, I don't even care. Like we already got Javon Hargrave said what he had to say about our practices being more relaxed and not demanding than the 49ers practices. And, you know, Fletcher Cox, you know, took a shot back at him. And I mean, it's just, it's just crazy as of right now. I don't know. Sidney Brown has Sidney Brown has complained about the practices after the Cardinals lost. He complained about that. I mean, it's just, or was it the Giants game? I forgot when he complained about it, but it's literally everything's a fucking mess. The way they practice to the way they get into games, the game plan, it's all a fucking disastrous mess. Mess. You know, and, and the players don't look, and I don't even blame the players, but the players have gotten so fucking soft this year. It's like, man, you know, Slate comes out and he's like, oh man, I'm just, I'm just happy I'm not home so I don't have to get booed. Like, who gives a shit, dude? Like, there's fans out there that are very, and I, I, and look, I respect fans that are saying, well, you know, I don't think they should be booed. You know, they, they're, you know, they're, they're just people. They're just playing a game of football. And I get it. But my opinion of, the fans of, of players getting booed. I mean, you have a, you have a fan base that literally a few weeks ago just told literally had a chant in the crowd to run the fucking football. Okay. Literally had to push the coaching, the crowd, actually the people paying money to go watch the entertainment are becoming the fucking coaches at this point, because that's how bad it is. All right. And you know, for players that complain about this bullshit about not getting booed, like, dude, you know what you got yourself into. Don't get all annoyed. Don't get all annoyed, dude. You have to handle it. If you handle them cheering for you, you have to handle all the bullshit. Or just stay off your fucking podcast and don't say a damn word. One or the other. Because these player podcasts are ruining, totally ruining the NFL. Ruining just like... It's just creating unnecessary buzz that we do not need, especially this fucking team doesn't need it. This team needs to be under the radar and quiet as fucking possible and get these fucking wins in the playoffs. That's where I'm at with that situation. The players have gotten soft over the partial of uh, you know, a partial games that we've played. AJ Brown before the 49ers game. Oh, you know, oh Debo's just playing. He's just, you know, kidding, you know. Like like dude, like why are you being all nice? Like just don't say anything at that point. Like all the players, even Devontae Smith the other day was like, "Yeah, you know, um I've nothing to say. We're just going to go we're we're just going to go over there and take, you know, and do our thing, you know." And that's it. And I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Um I'm hoping they don't take this L. I I, you know, but but at the end of the day, this is a reflection off of the coaches to keep these guys motivated. This is this is if players are saying this or maybe there's maybe this isn't a big deal. But when players are starting to quit on the team or they're going through the motions on game day and they're not trying 100% or maybe they're just not into it and they just don't feel everything's the same. And the more you lose, it gets worse. When the play calling gets worse, everything gets worse. The coaches are not tr are using these play are not using these players to their strengths. They're not using them uh, for, for great strategy. It's a, it's a fucking joke at this point. So I don't blame Slay, you know, for what he said. But at the but for me, in my opinion, like it, it, at this point, just don't even say anything. Just fucking play. You've been out for weeks, been out a few weeks, and like now you have something to say about oh, glad I'm not home. You get booed by the crowd. Like fucking, who gives a shit? Who cares about getting booed? Like just take the fucking booze. Like you, I mean, you're not used to it by now already. Seriously, you've been on this team for how long? It's just insane. Um, you know, other news, uh, in general, cause I cover all this stuff too, you know, cause they, this is just little things that happen. It looks like the Eagles assistant general manager and Alec Halaby, um, you know, is interviewing for the, uh, commander's GM job, um, today, um, and then, uh, Carolina Panthers. So, 
um, you know, a, a side hustle guy for Howie Roseman that works in the front office, you know, another guy, a lot, to be honest, a lot of GMs, a lot of assistant GMs have gotten jobs. Um, you know, a lot of guys have gotten jobs any, el elsewhere for GMs that are doing pretty good. Andrew Barry to the Browns. He was the assistant for Howie Roseman a few years ago. And uh, look what he's doing with the Browns so far, doing fantastic with the drafting and acquiring guys. And the Browns ain't looking too brownish anymore. They got a pretty good fucking team. Um, you know, so anybody connected to Howie Roseman, he always, is always a success for another team. You know, so just want to talk about that. Eagles are losing, a, a, you know, a right-hand man to Howie with everything. Um, I want to go to the Jalen Hurts injury. Now, he was wearing a right glove at practice. Um, I don't know how much he's throwing the football this week. I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a fractured middle finger. This was a dislocated finger pretty much. So he's going to be in a lot of pain. This doesn't, you know, uh, he's been trying. Um, you know, he's healing up. but. Maybe this will give more fruition to run the football more. Maybe this will force them to run the football more if Hurts can't throw that much in this game on Monday night. I know Baker Mayfield is dealing with a, a rib injury, and I think another he's dealing with two injuries right now. I think he's been limited at practice. Not even that. He did or he didn't even practice at all. But I know Baker Mayfield is banged up pretty good right now, too. So you know, everybody's banged up at this point. Um, Hertz kind of mentioned that he probably shouldn't have went back into the game after the injury, um, and, and kind of made it worse. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't blame, I don't blame him for going back as long as his finger wasn't broken. I really didn't give a shit at this point. Uh, but it's not fractured. It's just literally, um, it's just, uh, you know, you put it back into place and it's gonna You're going to be in a lot of pain for putting, putting a bone back into place. It's not something that you just heal up the next day. Um, and as for the Tampa Bay game on Monday night, finally, um, it's supposed to rain. It's supposed to be 90, what, 96% rain, something like that. So um, it's supposed to be uh, very heavy. And, um, you know, uh, the Eagles have played very good in cold uh, and very good in bad weather conditions. And, you know, you never like that to, for a team to play that much in bad weather. But I swear every week during the gauntlet, especially, it was like rain every single week, which was kind of nuts. Um, but yeah, it's going to be, uh, be a rainy day in Tampa. Um, it's a shame, uh, but it could help, uh, and, and, and really go anybody's way at that point. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens there, but other than that guys, that's pretty much it. I mean, the scapegoat is Brian Johnson and that's what it looks like. And Nick is sitting there with being more guilty as ever can be right now let me know what you guys think about that whole situation the bill belichick situation um it's it's really interesting so uh sorry this is a long video make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video as well and i appreciate so much everybody for supporting and watching i'll see you guys on the next one shakes what falls out peace out guys peace